afternoon. We're with Linda Herman and Pat Knoll with the St. Genevieve County Recycling Center. And Linda, if you would, just tell us a little bit how it got started. Well, uh, whenever uh, I ran for public office in 1995, I was county commissioner for 10 years, and one of the things people asked for was a recycle center. So from there, we started out, we had, uh, we formed a board, and uh, we started out by collecting newspapers one Saturday a month in a uh, uh, parking lot. And we go those to the Boy Scouts, and they collected whatever money from them. From there, we got a trailer, and we parked at a grandpa's store. Some of you might remember grandpa's store in Highway M. And from there, we were able to rent a, uh, an old warehouse. We went, really started into recycling, and we quick, quickly outgrew that. And then in uh, 2000, we knew this building was uh, available, and I tried for grants and couldn't get them. And I talked to wholesome people, and uh, they bought it for us, and they rented it to us for about five years, for a dollar a year. And they gave it to us in 2006. They gave it to the county to be used as a recycle center. So we have to thank wholesome. They are uh, really a good partner in our community. And how long has Pat been on board? standing here in front of a glass crusher right now, which we can't crush glass because only special people get to do that. <laughs> right, Tom Roth? So <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we welcome you and we're hoping today that we will inform you and if you come every day, maybe there are still some things that you might learn. So maybe we should go on inside and look at what we've got in there. Come in the door here, you'll notice to the left here we have styrofoam um, eight cartons. We save those for the farmers because it saves them some money in, in the long run. And we also are now beginning to collect styrofoam in the form of big packings. No peanuts, nothing like that, but what's it like for TVs or your uh, appliance, big appliances, we take the big solid blocks now. And the company from Perry will stop by and pick them up. Uh, we have newspapers here and boxes for magazines and boxes for the chipboard. Gray board, chipboard, box board, whatever you want to call it like what your things come in. And then uh, everything is fairly well, that when you walk in, you can see what you do. You do plastics, your tin cans. And if you have a question, you can ask these gentlemen right over here. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry. Because <laughs> they'd be happy to have you. Generally, we bring our... Uh, junk mail and things like that that people aren't, you know, don't, aren't familiar with and they will be glad to help you. Corrugated is put in here as you bring it in the door. If you have a truckload, go around the back and we'll just take it back in and then fill it, put it right the way into the big baler. We have here our brown glass, our clear glass, and green glass. That's from this, they've taken outside and crushed in that what the crush that I was standing in front normally before. So uh, the guys, when it's filled, they will take it outside, put it across the lot until we have maybe six or seven uh, hoppers full and then they'll crush it. So this is our product after it's been baled. This is a uh, hard white le ledger and this is our shredded paper here. It comes in already shredded. Uh, we don't shred it. I do understand though that the St. Genevieve Industries shred paper now. So if somebody has a big bunch of paper, they can have it shredded up there. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they will get rid of it now also. And around here, here is our chip board that we talk about, our gray board. You can see what it is. It's uh, beer cartons, uh, cereal boxes, jello boxes, anything that is a flat board, not got the little squiggles in it like corrugated. Next to the flat board or chip board is newspaper. And that's brought in, we, the people separate it out and everything. And a lot of people come in and get that for the flyer beds also. So in this early spring, put it down like a, a barrier that'll keep the weeds out. So, and we're happy to give it to them as long as it's in a box and we don't have manpower in it that, that we have already separated. And next to that is our corrugated. We have a load already to go out for the corrugated. 
people waiting for our truck. How many bales does it look? 39. 39 bales? Uh, right around 42,000 pounds. Terrific. Storage area that was uh, put up through a grant from the Solid Waste District. And uh, we store product back here till it's ready to be shipped. And it's come in very handy. There's no electricity back here, but we don't need it. We have the skylights that bring in the light. So it was very much needed for storage area. It's kind of empty now compared to what it has been, but uh, Pat works with the brokers to uh, get it. When she has a load, they come and pick it up. And so. it's only $100 for shipping. Because it's what the, what the truckers call deadheading. If they find an empty truck that is going someplace in it, they can save them some money too, but they don't go in empty. Cardboard baler or our baler, it's called a uh, horizontal baler. And we're very proud to have that. We've had it since 202, 203, somewhere in there. And it's really a godsend because people back in, we can bail it when we get ready for our stuff. It's much better than a downstroke. And there's some cardboard in there. And John, would you like to turn it on? Partially, we made payments on, and it's been a godsend. Before that, we had two downstrokes. That meant everything had to be cut and placed in there, and then they'd run the ram down, push it down, then they have to go put some more in. A very time-consuming. We have one left, one downstroke baler, which we use for clothing, and uh, it just sits there. And when we they got enough to make a bale, it gets baled, and there's a company comes and picks up that clothing also, clothing and textiles. And what, what do they do with the clothing? Uh, a company called Remains comes in, and they take it after we've bailed it. That if we take uh, all sort of clothing, all we stress is that it's clean. And then they can pick it up and they take it apart. They, anything that's got stains or can't be used, further used, they use as rags. And then they have a machine, a cellulose machine, that also spreads it in. The better clothing, they take out and put it along the borders or in thrift shops that people can buy for a cheaper price. The Mexican borders, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And with regards to the baler, I've seen trucks around collecting business, cardboard from businesses. How would someone get involved in that if they had a business and wanted to have their cardboard? Picked up by us? Yeah. Uh, in the city of St. Genevieve, we do pick up. Right, and all they have to do is give us a call. We, put, we have a list, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so on. Sometimes we go back twice a week or three times a week. Some days, I think some of them have a, a one every day. But just call us and let us know when would be the best time for us to pick it up, and we'd be happy to pick it up. We would like it separated to a degree, and like uh, the flat board, the cardboard, and the plastics and stuff like that. That's not all thrown in and clean because, like, uh, we were talking previously about the cardboard for pizza. We don't mind a cardboard, but we don't want the food particles on it because that contaminates the whole the whole load then. Yeah. And what's your phone number here? 883-9686. Uh, we are a county entity. All monies that we receive from sale of products goes to the county treasurer. All bills are paid through the county clerk's office. We have a budget of around $150,000 a year we uh, take in, we took in over 55000 last year for the sale of the products. And so uh, we are not self-sufficient, but we're doing a great service to the community. 
and a lot, uh, most all of our equipment is through uh, grants from the Solid Waste District, which the Missouri Legislature right now is uh, talking about uh, cutting their funding by 50%. We are in a good shape now. We have equipment and uh, we have very good support with the county commission. So last year, in fact, I wrote a grant for a new pickup because the ones we had, the one we had was in bad shape and uh, wasn't able to get a grant. There wasn't enough money through the solid waste district. So the county commission uh, bought us a used pickup, which has been a godsend to us. We uh, have less repairs and it's a dependable product. So uh, we're doing a big service to the community and we appreciate everyone's participation. How many people work here in total? 12. 12. We have 12 people. We have, most of them are senior citizens. We do have a college age girl and a, and a high school boy that comes in uh, Saturday mornings and, and sometimes in the afternoon. Does. Shoes. Shoes also. Shoes, no spike heel, only a heel of two inches. We take draperies, we take curtains, and we also take larger pieces of fabric, not of those little bitty pieces and stuff like that. We do take bras and we do take underwear as long as it's clean because some, obviously somewhere some people's going to have to have those things. And uh, But uh, no pillows, no cushions, or, or things like that. And the shoes are, are tied together. Mm -hmm. when they, uh, sometimes they're tied when they come in, and sometimes they, most of the time, you, you tie them. <laughs> anyway, she's, she's the county. She belongs to the county. She does her job really, really well. The 
we named her after Mr. Sullivan, but then we called her Sullivan. Did you get paid in treats or? <laughs> <laughs>